are a um, hot mess today. We are just doing life. And um, yeah, so it is Wednesday again. Um, and let's see, so far we have just been doing typical homeschool stuff. We've done our lessons, we've done, um, we went to Aldi and did our grocery shopping. Um, we still have kids in there that are working on math. We've got one of them that's still rewriting um, his English because it was sloppy and mama didn't accept it. Um, <laughs> we've got a little one that's learning colors and the dogs are outside playing. So if you hear uh, barking face out there with them. Um, but anyway, it is a good day. We are rocking a little bit. Um, mama meant to get a shower this morning and it didn't happen. So um, we are just here and I am so glad that uh, our friends and family, um, you know, we're all part of the family of God. I'm glad you guys are on here. Um, last week, we did not have a lunchtime devotion because we were at the um, memorial service for our friend, um, Sister Kim. And so it is a pleasure to be back with you guys. Hey, Viola, how are you doing? Um, all right, so we're going to open with a word of prayer. We are going to talk today a little bit about, um, I'm trying to think of how, like what word I want to use to describe this. We're going to talk a little bit about like, um, our personal opinion, kind of like, you know, our first impression whenever we read passages of scripture, um, and how important it is to actually like research, you know, what we're reading. You know, sometimes I read a passage of scripture yesterday and I was like, you know, I told my husband, I said, I was just like, that was kind of harsh, you know, and granted some of the things that are in the word of God are just like, that's just the way they are. Oh, Hey Heather, how are you? I haven't seen you in so long. Um, but anyway, so, you know, some of the stuff in scripture is like, really it's, it's tough. And, um, some of it we think like, we'll read it and we'll be like, man, you know, I don't like, why would God say that? And then like you research it and you realize the whole situation and you're like, oh yeah, I kind of, that makes sense. So that's what we're talking about today is like first impressions of scripture and why it's important for us to do our research. And research is not that hard. Like literally I wanted to know the theory behind, um, what was happening in this passage of scripture. We're going to read it today. Hey grandma. Um, in the book of Luke chapter nine, um, it's where we're going to be at. And so I wanted to know like what was going on and all I had to do was go get my other Bible that has, um, like some footnotes and read up on it. So it's not like you have to have like a degree in theology and <laughs> like the history of the word of God. Like if you want to research the Bible, you can use Google, but, um, you can also, you know, use the things that are around you. If you have a concordance, grab it out. If you've got, um, you know, a Bible that has footnotes, read them. Like, you know, it's not, it's not rocket science. It, you don't have to be, you know, a college graduate with a doctorate's degree in whatever to be able to do this. You can just like break out your Bible and do your research. So that's what we're going to be talking about is biblical first impressions and why it's important we do our research. So we're going to open with a word of prayer. Um, I kind of was like trying to hang out, like hold off a little bit until my daughter brought the dogs back in, but I can't tell if she's come through or not. So if it gets really loud, y'all just hang in there like, this is life. We do life together, right? So, all right, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for the friends and family that have tuned in. We thank you for the opportunity that you've given us free speech so where we can do this. And I just ask that you'll be with us, that you'll open up our understanding to the importance of why we should not just read through the Word of God, but to actually dive in and dissect and understand why those things are there, what the story is behind things and help us to have our interests um, peaked to want to look into things more and have a desire to study your word and um, to see what you have for us each day. And we give you the praise for it all in Jesus name. Amen. Alrighty. So hello, hello, everybody. If you have your, uh, I almost said hymnals. Y'all have been leading worship way too long at our church. If you got your hymnals, turn to page. No, it's not all what I meant to say. If you have your Bibles, um, go to Luke chapter nine. I'm going to get it out. Listen, y'all like this whole week has been a blur. I know that's no excuse. I have no makeup on. My hair is greasy. Like I haven't had a shower in, I don't know, mommy days. So like, it's just, you know, I've got a cake baking. I have chocolate all over me. So listen, if you're like Kimberly, I've just had a rough week, girl, I feel you. And, um, yeah, mm -hmm. this is life, right? <laughs> like, like we will survive. God is our help. God is our strength. We're going to make it through. 
So Luke chapter nine, you don't have to grab out your hymnal. We're not, we're not going to go through any, any songs today. I don't think. Um, but in Luke chapter nine, at the end, um, it talks about where Jesus kind of tells us like what it takes to follow him. Okay. And you've heard this. I've heard it a ton. Um, and I always kind of thought, well, you know, like that was rude. You know, if my son, if I was Mary here, my son had been the one that said these things. Oh, hey, Teresa, how are you? I would kind of been like, honey, like, shh, could you not have like said that a little bit better? But now that I've researched it and I know the situation, it's kind of different. Um, so Luke chapter nine, starting in verse uh, 57, it says, and it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus said unto him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the son of man hath not where to lay his head. In other words, you know, the animals, you know, have a, a home. And, you know, if you're going to follow me, like, it's going to be difficult. Okay. In other words, like, it's not going to be easy. Um, there are no, you know, <laughs> there are no like guarantees, you know, type thing. Like you follow God, it's you're working on your faith because that's what you're going to rely on. <laughs> There's not a whole lot of evidence around you. You just trust God's going to take care of it. So anyway, going ahead. And it says um, in 59, and he said unto another, so this is a different fellow. He said unto another, um, follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. And this is kind of like, um, kind of like the part that I thought was like a little, a little, you know, a little like rude, like Lord, like, why would you say that? Um, but anyway, and it says, um, in verse 60, and Jesus said unto him, let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. And I thought like, let the dead bury the dead. Like that was rude. You know, like here he is, his dad's dead. Okay. Y'all there's more to the story. <laughs> it's not like, he told him to skip his father's funeral. Okay. But we're going to keep reading and come back to that. So put a pin in it. Boop. And we'll come back. It says, and another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. All right. Yes. And amen. We've heard this a hundred times, right? Okay. So if you've been in church, you've probably heard this or you've read it. If you've been reading your Bible. Okay. So we're going to go back to the part where it talks about, you know, we kind of discussed the whole, you know, that he called him. He said, I'll, I'm going to follow after you, you know, whithersoever thou goest, right? In verse 57. And Jesus tells him in 58, listen, um, you know, like foxes have a den, but, um, there's no guarantee that like things are going to be, you know, hunky dory, you know, they're, like Jesus had nowhere to lay his head. And so like, if we're going to walk with Jesus, we are going to walk by faith. And that means that a lot of times we're just gonna have to trust God to come through when there looks to see like, like we don't see any answers, but we know God's going to handle it. That's where we're walking in faith. And so it's kind of a, it's kind of an encouragement for those of us who are having a difficult time right now, you know, regardless of the circumstances around us, if we choose to follow God, he's not going to leave us high and dry. Like the disciples were provided for. Jesus did life with them every single day. And, you know, they were taken care of. Now, they may have had to go up and knock on the door with some friends and be like, hey, we're in the area. Like, can we stay the night? And, you know, God provided for them. Okay, so whenever you're walking by faith, whenever you've decided I'm going to follow Jesus, things are going to happen that are going to be out of your comfort zone. And it's most likely not going to be the answer that you had prepared. You know, um, like, you know, there's sometimes that things happen and I'm like, well, Lord, that was not the direction I would have gone, but you didn't ask me for my help. <laughs> so I'm just going to trust you. We're just going to follow you. And okay, Lord, whatever. Like, yes, I'll follow you whithersoever thou goest. And Jesus warns us, like, it's a difficult journey. You're walking by faith. There's going to be a lot of times in your life when you're like, Lord, I don't know which way to go. I don't know what's happening. And he's like, walk by faith. Like, I will provide. And like I said, you know, the disciples, when they were following, you know, and walking with Jesus from town to town, they didn't go hungry. You know, they had a place to rest, even if it was out under the stars. You know, like, the Lord provided for them. God's going to provide for us. And if we choose to follow Jesus, it does not by any means tell you that your life's going to be a bed of roses. And if somebody's telling you that, you can show them a scripture like, listen, that's not what Jesus said. Like, 
Jesus didn't say that I'm going to have whatever I want, whenever I want it. Like that's not biblical <laughs> right here. He said like, um, yeah, I don't even have anywhere to lay my head. So if you're going to walk by faith, it's probably going to be a difficult journey, but we can make it. If we're determined, we can make it together. God will provide. Okay. So moving on, um, you know, it talks about, he said unto another, follow me. So here, this guy is kind of surrounded by Jesus. Like whenever I read this, I kind of thought, or whenever I hear the story about this, I kind of thought it was like one dude. You know, like him and Jesus were having a conversation. And that's not what happened. Um, it was kind of like a little group of people. And so the one said, I'll father you, I'll father, I'll follow you whithersoever thou goest. And then you've got another guy that Jesus says, Oh, follow me. And that's the guy who was like, um, yeah, uh, just a minute. Can I first go and like bury my father? And then I will come and follow you. And this, in you know, it's where Jesus says, we'll let the dead bury the dead. And I was like, that is such a rude comment. Why would Jesus say that to somebody? Well, I'm so glad you asked today on Lunchtime Devotions because what actually happened, I flipped over, like I said, I had to grab my pretty Bible, does not have footnotes. So I had to switch to like old reliable that's kind of wore out. Old reliable, <laughs> my life application Bible. Hey, Sister Elaine. Um, oh, hey, Sister Edna. I see you popped on. Um, so whenever you cross-reference things, the scriptures we're reading in Luke chapter 9 are also mentioned over in the book of Matthew um, in chapter 8. And so it talks about, um, I'm trying to see real quick where this verse is. Over in Luke, um, sorry, Matthew chapter 8, it talks about in verse 20, Jesus said unto, it, unto them, the foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the son of man hath not where to lay his head. So it's the same scripture like reference, just in a different section of the Bible. Okay. Cause Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are kind of like the same story told by four different people. Okay. And so here we are over here in verse 21 of Matthew chapter eight, it reads, and another of his disciples said unto him, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. But Jesus said unto him in 22, follow me and let the dead bury their dead. Now I'm like, well, that was just rude. Like here this poor gentleman is, his pop is dead and he wants to go bury him. And Jesus is like, no, you can't attend that funeral because you're going to follow me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Like this is why first impressions, whenever it comes to scripture, we need to be careful about how we um, receive these things because... Whenever you look at the story, okay, they, this is, you know, speculation, but from what I can gather from the research that I've done, the footnotes, um, the historians believe that this gentleman was most likely the firstborn son, um, of his father. And so the reason that he said, well, let me go bury my father doesn't mean that like my father's dead and he's at the funeral home and like, the services happen in this afternoon. That's not what it meant. Okay. What it meant was that his father was most likely elderly. So his father most likely was coming to the end of his days. And this firstborn son didn't want to miss out on his inheritance. Now, if you just read that scripture for face value and you just take it at what it is, let the dead bury their dead and follow me. You can look at the whole, like, you know, listen, let the world do their thing. Follow after Jesus. That's true. But the rest of this story that I want you guys to be aware of is the fact that you've got a firstborn son, an elderly father. So whenever this gentleman said, uh, yeah, Jesus, you called me, you want me to follow you. And, um, can I bury my father first? He wasn't talking about like, I've got the funeral at three o'clock today and, um, I'll be, I'll meet you after that. No, that's all he's saying. This guy, um, wanted to make sure that he buried his father because he wanted to make sure he didn't miss out on his inheritance. Why? Because in those days, in order to, um, you know, have some type of like financial security, you needed that inheritance. The firstborn son, it was a right that was given to him. And he wanted to make sure he didn't miss that. He wanted to make sure that, you know, physically he was, you know, financially prepared that he got the blessings from his father that was promised to him. And so, whenever the young gentleman said, well, you know, let me go bury my father. He wasn't talking about this afternoon. I'll catch up with you after the funeral. He's talking about however long my father lives. I don't want to miss my blessing. I don't, I don't want to miss the hand-me-downs for my father. I don't want to miss my inheritance. And so whenever Jesus said, follow me and let the dead bury the dead, he's saying, listen, no, if you're going to stay and wait with your father, he could last another 10, 15 years. You don't know. And Jesus is saying, follow me today. And so he was saying, but I've got guaranteed blessings over here. I've got, I've got a guaranteed inheritance 
over here. Let me bury my father. Let me make sure I take care of all my business. And then I'll come follow you. And Jesus was like, no, that's not let the dead bury their dead. You follow me today. And so whenever, like I said, whenever we read these scriptures, it's easy to say, and I was guilty yesterday. I read it and I was like, oh man, like Jesus was harsh. You know, don't go to your dad's funeral. That is not at all what he was saying. He's saying, listen, don't put off the calling of God for years and days and months or whatever. Do it today. If Jesus is calling you to follow him, do it today. If Jesus has given you a ministry or a, um, a passion in your heart to go out and do something for him, do it today. Don't push it off. Don't wait until you're, you know, you have enough in the savings account to be able to do it. Don't wait until you have, you know, enough support and, you know, um, people helping you to make, you know, feeding the needy possible. Don't wait until you have everything prepared because that's not walking by faith. If we're going to walk by faith, if we're going to walk with Jesus, like the disciples did, we've got to understand that like, we're never going to have everything together, right? Like if we didn't come to Jesus for salvation until we had everything right and we were good and clean and like perfect living people, none of us would ever make it. But praise God, that's not what he asks us to do. He says, walk in faith, follow me, leave the things here, let them take care of it. And I'm going to provide for you. And the problem is a lot of times people today, I think they're afraid of commitment. They don't want to commit to the fact that, you know, God's promises are true, that he absolutely 100% beyond the shadow of a doubt can provide. You know, I mean, we have lived, I know um, we were talking to a couple this weekend whenever we had the opportunity to minister at um, Harvest at the Barn, you know, and they were talking about the um, mandates that are going on, you know, and how they were uncertain about what was going to happen with their future, you know, financially with both of them working, you know, if something changed and the mandates came through and they didn't, you know, um, give in and, you know, they were pressured and they just, you know, if they said no, and they lost their job. They're like, I just don't know financially how we're going to make it. But praise God. I mean, we are blessed and highly favored. We are not exempt from pain. Like our AC went out. Our pool pump went out this last week. Like it was a mess. Okay. Like our house's hold has been a mess. Um, but you know what? God provided. And we have been able to raise. I mean, I stopped working when, um, right after a car accident when I was pregnant with Faith. So you're talking like 13 years. Okay. My kid's 13 now. Um, for at least the last 13 closer to 14 years, God has provided for our family on one income. So if that whole idea of like living on one income scares you, is it tight? Yes. Do we have the best of things? Absolutely not. But you know what? We have food, we have shelter, we have the things that we need and some of the things that we want. I mean, God has been good to us. We are blessed. Um, but don't allow that fear, um, to scare you into making a decision that you're not comfortable making. Okay. Um, like God can provide. Is what I'm getting at. Like if, if Jesus didn't have anywhere to lay his head and yet the disciples were fed and clothed and taken care of, they didn't have the finest things in life, but you know what? They were provided for and God is going to do that to us. So whenever we read these scriptures and we think, well, man, you know, that was just really harsh. Like that was <laughs> Jesus, let the dead bury the dead. Don't go to your dad's funeral. I'm sorry. You have to follow me right now. That's not what he was saying. So that's why it's so important. Whenever you're reading scriptures and you get to a point and you're like, I just don't understand why on earth our Lord and Savior of love and grace and mercy would say that to somebody, look it up, research the scripture you have a question about, because I would have never known that there was more than one person Jesus was talking to. I never would have known that, um, I never even would have thought about the inheritance being that much, you know, of an important thing, you know, like historically, you know, our, I mean, nowadays, I guess we have inheritances, but it's not like your birthright, you know, type thing. And, um, I never would have thought about that had I not stopped and said, hang on, let me see what, you know, let me see what I can find here in my little books and research. It's so important. Whenever you're confused, research the scriptures. If you have a question, don't take it at face value. Do some research. See why that's in there. Well, why did God say that? It's probably important. You know, there's people nowadays that are like, yeah, you know, I'll serve God as soon as, you know, I get $50,000 in the bank so that I can, you know, put it towards ministry. Or as soon as I figure out how everything's going to work the whole time, then I'll step out into the mission field. But guys, that's not how God works. Like, yes, we need to prepare. And yes, we need to be working for God. But when he says, go walk in faith and go. Um, and so the last verse flipping back um, to Luke chapter nine, like I said, same story, two different passages of scripture. Luke chapter nine, the last verse in uh, verse 62, it says, and Jesus said unto them, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Now that is harsh, 
yes and amen, but I kind of understand like why he said it. You know, if we're like, okay, Lord, I'm going to work for you. Yes. You want me to, um, whatever you want. Okay. Yeah, we'll do that. You want me to feed the homeless? Okay. You want me to sing on the street corner? Okay. You want me to go and minister in this church or that church? Okay. Yes. You want me to go into foreign missions? Okay. And we are like, yes, you want me to witness to the people that, you know, are battered or the people that, you know, are in, um, you know, trafficking situations, or you want me to share my story. You want me to reach out to those men and women that need my help. Yes. And we put our hands to work and we're like, yes, Lord, we're going to work for you. And then we get to realize, and you know what, like, this is difficult. I don't know how many of you guys have ever gardened, but it's not like the most, um, relaxing thing. Okay. <laughs> Once it starts producing, it's not bad, but there's constantly like weeds, watering, you know, soil, you've got to do all these treatments. So like plowing a field, is hot, dirty, really tough work. It's not easy. And so here Jesus is saying, listen, you know, you're like, yes, you know, you're, whenever God calls you into ministry, you first step out, you're like, you're ready to charge hell with a water pistol. You're like, yeah, here we go. And you're going, and then as you're going, you think, man, this is hard. And you start thinking about, well, you know, back before I was working for God, things are a lot easier. You know, well, back before I stepped out into the calling God had for me, I didn't have as many struggles. You know, back before, whatever, way back when, things were easy going, but you weren't working for God. You know, the devil, if you belong to the devil, he's not going to fight you. And if you're not working for God, then the devil's not threatened by you, right? I mean, you're not, <laughs> you're not on his radar necessarily because you're not doing a big work for God. You're not working for him. You're not accomplishing anything. It's not like you're getting people saved or anything. You're not witnessing. But whenever we start witnessing, we start working for God and it starts getting really, really hard. And we start looking back. We start doubting what God's called us to do. We start thinking that the things of the world have more um, of a draw than heaven. Whenever we start thinking, you know what? Things are easier if I just exist until I'm done living. And then, you know, I believe in God. I'm going to go to heaven. But you know how many people you can reach on the way if you would just push the plow? If you would just keep on keeping on? If you would just stay focused where you're going? You know what I was telling the kids? yesterday we were talking about the scripture in the van on the way to um legoland in the morning and i told the kids i said listen if i'm driving and y'all are constantly like mom look mom look mom look 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 you know your kids do that mine do too and i'm like i'm driving i can't and i said if what if i'm driving and y'all are mom look mom look and i look every five seconds i said the car is gonna go like this mom look okay mom look this way right like you don't you have to look where you're going to make a straight line or at least I can. And even then I kind of have a hard time with a straight line. And so if I'm looking at where I'm going, I'm going to be going straight. But if I'm distracted by this and hey, look at this, my van's going to swerve in and off the road. I'm going to be doing, you know, fishtailing around. And so whenever God tells us that those who take their hands off of the plow and look back are unfit for the kingdom of God, think about it. If heaven is our home, if we're, we've got our eyes on the prize, if we're headed towards where Jesus wants us to, if we're doing what he wants us to do, and we're not looking to the left and the right. We're going to have a nice straight line to where God can plant, use our lives, use our testimonies, use the things he's brought us through to plant and grow seeds behind us, right? That's why we plow. Whenever you plow a field, it's so that you can plant and harvest a crop. It's so that you're doing something productive. You know, and the Bible talks more than once about how our lives, you know, need to be, you know, some of them plant and some of them water and God brings the increase. Like that's what's happening whenever we're pushing that plow. We are pushing, making way. We're doing the hard work so that people can come behind us. God can come behind us and use others to plant those seeds in the lives of the people around us that we've come in contact with so that people can come across and they can water on them so that God can bring fruit so that these people can come to salvation so that they can grow and step out in the ministry that God's called them to. Why? Because we've done the hard work, because we've plowed, but we got to plow a straight line. We can't be in and out. We can't be taking our attention over here and over here and over here and expect our vehicle to stay on the road. It's not how it works. If you don't look out the windshield, if you try to drive looking out the back window of your car, you're going to be in like serious trouble in an accident really soon. That's not what God has planned for us. He wants us to plow a straight to help other people. Now, I said all of that to say this. Whenever you read a passage of scripture, do not immediately jump to conclusions about, well, that was rude like I did. Okay, because like, listen, I've been in church since before I was born and never researched this verse until now. So Luke chapter nine, verses 57 through 62 is also mentioned in Matthew 
chapter 8, um, verses 18 through 22. So if you guys want to write that down, if you don't have your Bibles, that's fine. Um, but I encourage you when you read something and you have a question about scripture, do the research. Find out the backstory. See why that's in there and how it applies to us because I personally believe that every single part of scripture is applicable to our lives today. Or it wouldn't have been in there. Right? I believe that every single part of scripture is applicable to our lives today. That it's in there for a reason. And sometimes you have to do a little bit of digging to find the backstory to figure out why and how that applies to you. But I can almost guarantee you that it does every single time. So, I love you guys. Let's keep our hands on the plow. Let's look forward to heaven. Let's make a straight path so that God can use um, the experiences, the difficult times he takes us through, the hard work he has us do um, to reach other people, um, you know, to draw them in. You know, the end is near, you know, type thing. Jesus is coming soon. And, um, you know, we want him to use us. We want him to use our lives and the things that we've gone through and the way that we react to them to encourage other people to give their life to the Lord before it's everlasting too late. So I love you guys. I hope this lunchtime devotion was an encouragement. Feel free to share it with your friends. I'll be back next Wednesday. I don't, I don't plan on being out anytime soon. So I'll see you guys next Wednesday at noon. And, um, if you have any questions or whatever, you just need to chat. I'm here. Um, you can call me, you can Facebook message me. Um, and I love you guys. So that is it. Y'all have a great week and um, we'll catch you next Wednesday at noon. So take care. Enjoy your lunch.